everyone, and welcome to Arirang News live from Seoul. I'm Na Hyun Kyung. These are the top stories at this hour. The Sony Pictures film The Interview will be screened at limited movie theaters in the U.S. on Christmas Day. This, despite a group of hackers threatening to launch terror attacks if the movie is shown. The world's biggest economy grows at an annualized 5% rate in the third quarter, beating market expectations. The Dow Jones closes above the 18,000 mark for the first time. And the deadline suggested by those who claim to have hacked into Korea's nuclear plant operators network is approaching. They want officials to shut down the nation's nuclear plant facilities. Now we have a lot to get to today. Let's begin with the movie The Interview. America's biggest movie chains are still reluctant to screen it, but a couple of small theaters said they are willing to show the movie, and Sony Pictures was more than happy to take them up on the offer. The company says it's a victory for freedom of speech. For our top story, here's Jim young -gil. In what some are calling a victory for Hollywood, Sony Pictures says it is now going to release the interview, a comedy film which depicts the fictional assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in some U.S. theaters after all. In a statement, the studio's chief executive, Michael Linton, said they had never given up on releasing the movie and that they were excited it will be shown in a number of theaters from Christmas Day. One of the stars of the movie, Seth Rogen, tweeted that the people had spoken and freedom had prevailed. The New York Times reports that the biggest theater chains in the U.S. are still unlikely to screen the film. But Sony will likely be able to patch together distribution in two to three hundred smaller independent theaters. Representatives from the four largest theater chains in the U.S. have declined to comment, only saying that negotiations over the film's release were ongoing. A week ago, Sony scrapped the release of its 44 million U.S. dollar film after their systems were hacked and threats were made against U.S. movie theater chains. The cyber attack was blamed on North Korea and the threats of violence caused major chains to pull the film due to security concerns. The interview has been at the center of escalating tensions between the U.S. and North Korea, with Pyongyang denying it has anything to do with the attack. The White House said President Barack Obama welcomed Sony's decision, as America is a country that believes in free speech. He had earlier criticized Sony's initial decision to cancel the release. Sony Pictures says it will continue to secure more platforms and more theaters so the movie reaches the largest possible audience in the U.S. Kim young Arirang News. A day after being offline for some 10 hours, North Korea's internet connection was reportedly down again, partially on Wednesday Korea time. A clear answer on who or what may have caused the outage isn't known yet, but what's clear is that the U.S. isn't saying much about its possible involvement. For this, here's Shin Se-min. The U.S. State Department is sidestepping questions on whether the U.S. had a hand in North Korea's internet outage on Monday. Spokesperson Marie Harf told reporters that there was no new information to share about the issue, but added that U.S. President Barack Obama had spoken about the potential responses separate and apart from what we've seen over the past 24 hours, and that it was up to North Korea to address the state of their Internet. Tuesday's press briefing came a day after Harf indicated that not all U.S. responses to the hacking would be immediately evident. President Obama repeatedly vowed of a proportional response to what he called the cyber vandalism on Sony. The U.S. is reportedly weighing a new round of financial sanctions on Pyongyang that would target the banks and trading companies used by leader Kim Jong-un and other North Korean officials. The U.S. is also reviewing whether to put North Korea back on its list of state sponsors of terrorism. However, such measures would largely be symbolic. North Korea is already among the most heavily sanctioned countries on Earth, and Harv said there wouldn't be a large practical effect of additional sanctions. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. 
Hyundai Group Chairwoman Hyun Jung Un and members of the Kim Dae Jung Peace Center crossed the inter Korean border earlier in the morning. They were invited by Kim Yang Gon, North Korea's top official in charge of South Korean affairs, to visit the Kaesong Industrial Complex. Kim said he wished to express gratitude for the condolences both groups sent earlier this month for the third anniversary of former leader Kim Jong il's death. The two groups have special ties with Pyongyang. Former President Kim Dae-jung held the first ever inter-Korean summit in 2000. Hyundai Asan ran a joint tour program to the North's Mount Kumgang Resort until 2008. Authorities are still trying to track down the culprit who leaked documents from Korea's nuclear power plant operator. The hacker or group of hackers are adamant about their demands and with the Christmas Day deadline approaching, some are concerned that the situation could quickly spin out of control. For the details, here is Connie Kim. Halt operations at three of Korea's nuclear facilities by Christmas Day or face the consequences. That was a threat earlier this week from hackers who say they'll release tens of thousands of documents related to the nation's nuclear reactors and destroy control systems if their demands are not met. They've already leaked documents on five separate occasions over the last week. The information released Wednesday included blueprints for nuclear facilities. And in response to the recent security breach, the Energy Ministry conducted a two-day-long cybersecurity drill this week on all of Korea's nuclear facilities. The network security of power plants was reviewed, as was protocol for shutting them down in the case of a malfunction. Trying to ease public concern, the state-run Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Company says the leaks pose no threat as the information being released has no impact on the safety at the plants. But experts remain skeptical. The hackers say they have about 100,000 pieces of data. Even if that data is not highly classified, it can be reassembled, creating a huge chunk of new information. Then it becomes very dangerous. President Park Geun-hye has categorized the security breach as a grave incident. She called on the government to ensure that key facilities, including nuclear plants, are prepared to counter cyber terror threats. In response to the potential hacking threat, the energy ministry raised its alert level against cyber attacks one notch to the third highest level of caution on Tuesday. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Well, the number of hacking attacks being reported by private individuals is on the rise in Korea. The Korea Internet and Security Agency says nearly 13,000 cases were reported over the first 10 months of this year, up by more than 2,200 from last year. An official from the agency says, though, that it's not the number of hacking attacks themselves that are on the rise, but that more people are reporting their cases because they are more aware of the threat now. He added, that the number of attacks detected far exceeds those that are reported. The number of phishing sites in the meantime that impersonate banks or government organizations has also spiked by more than 600 to nearly 9,000 this year. In the year 2012, for Korea was added to record high All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. Join Na Hyung Kyung. Live from Seoul. Shopping market thinks the true meaning of creation shines through. Islamic State militants have a goal of quote religious cleansing by murder. That's what the first ever Western journalist who returned from observing the militant group firsthand says. Connie Lee reports. The first ever Western journalist to have direct access to the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq has returned with a strong warning about the militant group. Has the power of a nuclear tsunami. It's incredible. I, I, I was so amazed. I, I, I couldn't understand this enthusiasm. In an interview with ABC News and BBC Radio, the 74-year-old German journalist who traveled with the militants through territories they control says their official philosophy was brutal religious cleansing. We will conquer Europe someday. We will for sure. We'll kill 150 million to 100 million, 500 million. The journalist describes how he saw hundreds of fighters from all over the world arriving in IS territories each day to join the group. He says he's pessimistic that any Western country will be able to stop them. 
The inside look comes on the heels of a report from Amnesty International, which shows the horrifying reality that women and girls face under the Islamic State. The report says hundreds of women, especially from the Yazidi tribe, are tortured, sexually assaulted, and that girls even younger than 14 years old are held as sex slaves. I am hungry, but it's better than getting sexually assaulted. I can take it all, but I just can't bear the thought of young girls being raped. Across Syria and Iraq, in the midst of rubble and destroyed buildings, are the tens of thousands of Yazidi refugees who have fled the violence of the militants. Connie Lee, Arirang News. U.S. Congressman Mike Honda is known for his activities to resolve the issue of wartime sexual slavery by Japan, but he says talking to Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe about that issue is a waste of time. So what is the alternative? Hwang Sung-hee tells us what Honda said. Representative Mike Honda says it would be a waste of energy and time to put pressure on Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe about Japan's wartime sexual slavery because he has no interest in resolving the issue. In an interview with Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency, Honda said South Korea and the United States should increase pressure at the grassroots level and make them understand that this is a necessity for Japan to do in order to become fully accepted. Honda added the Japanese population over the last two and a half generations has been ignorant about the country's wartime crimes since their government has not been teaching children about it. The congressman recently made a five-day visit to Korea and met with some of the surviving former sex slaves as well as President Park Geun-hye. Honda played a leading role raising U.S. awareness about the issue, including making House Resolution 121, which urges Japan to formally acknowledge, apologize and accept historical responsibility into a law. Saying that time is running out for the elderly victims, Honda said he is open to taking fresh action in Congress. But Honda said it is time for the White House and the State Department to turn up the heat and turn the screws on Japan for a sincere apology. However, with his landslide victory in recent snap elections, experts expect Abe to walk a clear path of an ultra-right-wing leader who wants to see Japan restored to what he believes was its wartime greatness. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Shifting gears to the economy now, the U.S. economy grew at an annualized 5 percent rate in the third quarter this year, and with this, the fastest pace in over a decade. U.S. stocks rallied on Tuesday local time. Experts say the world's largest economy will gain momentum next year. Kim ji tells us more. The world's largest economy grew at an annual rate of 5 percent during the July to September period, the fastest rate of expansion since 2003 and higher than the government's earlier estimate of 3.9 percent. Economists point to strong consumption, especially on health care services. Consumer spending jumped 3.2 percent, its biggest jump this year. Two-thirds of the U.S. economy is related to consumption. And history would suggest that business investment lags consumption or lags economic growth. So if the overall economy is starting to accelerate, then 2015 could also be a fairly strong business investment climate. The data boosted stocks on Wall Street, lifting the Dow Jones above 18,000 for the first time ever. The S&P 500 also closed at a record high. Growth projections in the fourth quarter are expected to record an annual rate of around 2.5 percent and 3 percent next year, putting weight that the U.S. Federal Reserve will stay on course and starts raising interest rates by mid-2015. Boosted by the strengthening labor market and falling oil prices, consumer outlays are expected to help cushion the U.S. economy from uncertainties in China and the Eurozone and a recession in Japan. Kim Jong, Arirang News. And on to the Korean economy now. Despite the government's expansionary fiscal and monetary policies, consumer sentiment in the nation isn't getting any better. It dipped to a 15-month low this month. Experts point out that the trend could make more consumers close their purse strings. Kwon Soa explains. Korean consumers are not feeling too good at the moment. With the nation's consumer sentiment dropping for the third straight month in December. 
The Bank of Korea says its consumer sentiment index stood at 102 this month, a 0.1 point drop from the month before. It now stands at a 15 month low. A reading above 100 does indicate that there are more optimistic consumers than those who expect economic and living conditions to worsen. Experts say that to tackle sluggish domestic demand, more needs to be done to raise consumer confidence so businesses are encouraged to invest. Consumer confidence now is even lower than right after April's deadly Sewolo ferry sinking. The government's monetary policies seem to have improved conditions in August and September, but despite another rate cut in October, things are worsening, raising concerns that planned structural reforms may not have been that effective. When uh, in interest rates fall, typically people, we want people to borrow more, to uh, consume more, uh, buy more housing or invest more, but because we have such a high debt uh, for households, they're not, uh, they're not really borrowing that much to spend. So that path toward higher consumption and higher investment is very weak right now. The central bank says external factors such as falling international oil prices and Russia's currency crisis are also dragging on Koreans' consumer sentiment. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Instead of going the conventional route, more businesses are starting online first before going offline. One of Korea's biggest online shopping sites, Interpark, opened a toy shop in southern Seoul earlier this month and a 400 square meter bookstore in central Seoul in October. Home shopping malls like CJO Shopping also opened a clothing store in Seoul earlier this month and it doesn't end there. GS Home Shopping also plans to open temporary pop-up stores at least once every few months. Experts say the boundaries between online and so-called offline shops are blurring as companies try to take advantage of the public's interest in both styles of shopping. Well, new figures show Korean stocks yield some of the lowest dividends for shareholders compared to other global markets. According to Bespoke Investment Group, Korea's stock market dividend yields over a year period ending in July ranked at the bottom compared to other major markets at a mere 1.1 percent. Now, that's a third of the average of the 22 countries surveyed. Emerging markets like Brazil and China yielded more than the average of 3 percent. The U.S., Japan and India marked less than 2 percent but still above Korea. Well, I'm sure people in the capital have been noticing the Christmas decorations for some time now. Well, there's a special street that takes the Christmas spirit to the next level. Our Im Yoon Hee went there and she now joins us back in the studio. Good afternoon, Yoon Good afternoon. So, Merry Christmas. Finally good to say that. But really, I feel like this year we've seen more, some more decor, more Christmas lights than years previous. And people have said that's a response to some of the traumatic events we saw this year. Now, one of those special places is Yonsei Ro, Ro, Ro Road. And they've taken a rather unique approach to Christmas this year with this street festival. But first, what does the history of Christmas in Korea look like? Take a look at this next report. While millions of lives around the world prepare for old St. Nick, so have the people of Korea. Families and friends gather for the holiday cheer. But Christmas wasn't always this way. After the establishment of Catholicism in the 19th century, Christmas was first introduced to Korea and it only continued to spread, celebrated by both children and adults, recognized as a very special time of the year. In the 60s and 70s, Korea was under a strict curfew imposed by the military government. However, the curfew would be lifted on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, so the holiday became very special and well-known. It wasn't until around the 90s when Christmas really became about the kids, families, and couples. So, what does Christmas of the 21st century look like? 
while it's become more festive and more merry than ever before. To alleviate some of the stress and hardship of 2014, Sademun has created something very special. A street dedicated entirely to a Christmas street festival. They've blocked the roads and decked the halls to spread the Christmas cheer. And it's not every day you can hug Santa, or many Santas for that matter, each eagerly waiting to warm the spirits of all with their free hugs. The holidays are a time for people from all different walks of life to gather, some looking for the Christmas spirit, while some are looking to give it out. From coloring ceramic figurines with your family, to making hand-punched and printed Christmas cards with friends, a row of festive do-it-yourself booths await to entertain those passing by. And of course, Christmas wouldn't be the same without a tray of Santa's favorite cookies. Each dollop of frosting and ornate decoration precisely placed by hand. Because Rudolph once told me that Santa likes his cookies homemade. Once the sun goes down, the party isn't over. Bright lights and twinkling stars ignite the skies. Christmas is definitely in the air. But as this is a festival of a rather special nature, you can't forget the music. And it doesn't always need to be all prim and proper. These musicians are here with a rock and roll of a good time for an audience ready to dance the night away. Even though December means freezing temperatures outside, the cold doesn't stop these people warm with the Christmas spirit. Under a festive night sky, it's time to jingle all the way, because this year there's a merry, merry Christmas waiting for you. All right, thanks to your report, I'm finally now in the Christmas mood. It feels what? like Christmas now. It's just starting now. <laughs> yes. Well, so that take, they, uh, takes place right outside of the Shinchon Station, exactly, I noticed. Exactly, exactly. Right? So that area actually is known for uh, being in between four of the major universities here in Seoul. So if you've been there before, you'll notice it's always busy, always something going on. So and many the crowd people there. Is definitely every single young. day. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So the Santas, I know you get the free hugs from the Santas. They're definitely not grandpas under those suits. Uh, but really a fun area, you know, lots of things going on, and uh, people were definitely enjoying the music. Right. I'm, uh, I have to say the Santa that uh, you gave hug, or he was supposed to give you a hug, but it looked like you, well, you were giving him one. a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I did go after All right, that so one. what else do they have planned uh, for the festival or for the street, mm -hmm. the people who will go there to enjoy themselves? Right, so today on the open stage, they're featuring quite a different uh, variety of different performances from many different artists, but one thing to definitely keep your eye open for is a gospel and cho a Christmas choral performance. Mm. They're having 24 artists sing together, so beautiful Christmas carols. Who doesn't love Christmas carols to get you in the spirit? Uh, but another thing, tomorrow, starting at 3 p.m. on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. they're having an absolutely huge Christmas swing dance party. Wow. So there'll be over 100, 150 couples, so that's over 300 people there dancing and doing the swing to some beautiful Christmas carols and Christmas tunes. Wow, I don't know if, if it's going to fit everybody right, there. Well, it's such fit. a small alley. That's what's going to make well, it fun. it's big, but with all the tents <laughs> and everything, I feel mm -hmm. like it's going to be small. But anyway, thank you very much, uh, Uni, for today's report. It's always a pleasure, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather forecast. Right now we have cloudy skies across the country, but those will clear up this afternoon due to a high pressure front and wind system flowing in from China. And we can expect a mild afternoon with warmer temperatures. However, due to those windy conditions, sensory temperatures will be much lower, so make sure to bundle up when heading outside. 
Now, our Christmas morning is expected to be cold, dipping down to negative 7 degrees, which is colder than today. However, we can expect a mild Christmas afternoon. Now, the rest of the week looks favorable as well, with mostly sunny skies and higher temperatures. Now to our readings for today, so we'll be at 7 this afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan will top a bit higher at 9 and 12 degrees. And moving over to other regions such as Jeju Island will get up 13, Dokdo hits down to 8, while Mount Kungang's high drops down to negative 3. Well, that's all for now, Michelle Park. I, have, I hope you have a wonderful day. And that's Arirang News for now. Thanks for watching. Do join us again at 4 p.m. Korea time for more updates.